Chapter 6 Boy in the River Phil falters in place for a second, as he can only stare at the paper. A tight feeling winding up in the back of his throat. Words gone. Techno turns his head to where he dropped his coin earlier. And it lays a few feet away, having rolled off on the street. He doesn't go to pick it up. And instead looks back up at Phil, whose eyes are wide and stuck on the wall. Techno squeezes his hand and Phil blinks, trying to not let his breathing get too quick. He glances down to Technoblade, who blinks back up, face blank. Phil doesn't know what he must be thinking, and he's not sure if he should be comforting him or not. He goes to walk up to the wall of the church instead, tugging Techno along. Reaching a hand up to the flyer, he holds onto the edge of it tightly with two fingers, reading over it, eyes narrowing at the description, the number offered if the monster is caught. It's high, and Phil's never been one for being rich. He doesn't crave that sort of power. But even then, he knows that the number there, the gold offered, it's one hell of a motivation. Has the appearance of a small boy, it describes, something tugging sharply in Phil's heart. Blue scales on its face, fins for ears, Dark gray eyes, brown hair. Do not attempt talking with it. Kill or capture on sight. The description is simple enough. And the warning only makes Phil narrow his eyes even more. His mouth turned into a deep frown. A small boy. Not the appearance of a small boy. He is a small boy. A child. This flyer makes it out as if this boy is an uncontrollable danger. But Phil knows for a fact that if any deaths were the cause of this boy, it would be out of self-defense. His mind wanders to Techno's first kills, those two travelers. That had been unlucky on its own. But the thought of this kid being hunted, on the run as he stands here, it's too painful to dwell on. Guilt pours down his shoulders, too cold and he swallows down slight panic, instead just yanking at the flyer and ripping it off the wall. It may not help all that much, but the less people who see it, the better. Techno tugs at his hand, his curious face looking up at Phil, and his eyes flick to the paper in Phil's hand, almost silently asking if he can see. For a second, Phil wants to refuse, for a split second, he feels as if he can hide it away and not let Techno truly realize how many people out there can hurt them both, kill them both. To not let him realize how unsafe he really is being so small. But Techno reaches his hand out towards the paper anyway, even with Phil's hesitance, and the expression on his face spells determination, something like slight anger flashing across for a moment. Phil knows that Techno would be more upset over not being told, rather than knowing. Kneeling down to Techno's level, Phil lets go of his hand and gives the flyer over, Techno grasping it with two hands, reading over the words, staring at the drawing of what is supposed to be a boy just like him. Well, not just like him, but similar in the way that they're both meant to be hunted in some sort of way. The paper crinkles in his grip, and Techno's eyes are wide for a moment, stuck on the flyer in his hands. This is who we're looking for? He asks, very quietly, just under his breath. I'm sure that's not what he actually looks like. Phil reassures, tugging at Techno's shirt, fixing the way it's tucked. It's probably inaccurate. Offering money for his head. Techno says, like he can't quite wrap his head around it. Phil holds back a sigh, letting Techno process it slowly, as he makes plans in his head. He needs to find the location of this kid as fast as possible, then work to be able to bring him along with him. No doubt that if there's already a flyer out for him, with warnings and all, then the kid will be distrustful. 
Phil quietly hopes that he might be nearby, so that Phil can hopefully get there in time. He's already too late, by too much. But better late than never arriving at all. How old is he? Techno asks, raising his eyes from the paper, Phil slightly thrown off by the question. How old do you think he is? I... Phil trails off, both not sure on how to respond, and not sure if he really wants to think about it. He got to Techno when he was young, in time before any harm came to him, and he's glad for that. But if this kid is as old as Techno, and Phil's this late... I don't know. Techno's eyes fall back onto the paper. Phil doesn't know how to describe his expression. Something between confused, annoyed, and slightly fearful. He doesn't know if it's a good reaction or not. The paper crinkles even more in his grip, and Phil doesn't say anything when the flyer gets crushed into a ball in Techno's hands. Techno frowning and holding it to his chest. Phil holds his hand out for the paper so he could throw it away. Burn it later, maybe, just for the satisfaction. But Techno shakes his head. Instead, just grabbing onto Phil's hand, eyes expectant. The paper stays crumpled in Techno's grip. And Phil just stands to his feet again, pulling Techno along for the two of them to enter the church. Techno sticks to his side as Phil pushes open the wooden doors, the doors creaking quietly as they go in. It's mostly empty, the place quiet save for a few hushed conversations from people scattered around. Townspeople, either there for their own prayers, or waiting for a blessing from the priest himself. Phil doesn't go to sit down like the others. Instead, he walks right through with a slight rush to his steps, ignoring the glances he gets, eyes on him, on his wings, on Techno. He holds Techno's hand just a little tighter. The priest that Phil is looking for sits at the front of the church, dressed in dark purple robes, hair curly and dark brown. They're writing in a small journal, maybe a diary or something along those lines. Phil would be curious, but he has bigger things on his mind. Excuse me, Phil asks, pausing right beside where he sits. The priest raises their head from the journal, and as they do, Techno leans against Phil's leg, face turned to the floor. Are you the priest here? They blink for a moment, closing the small book in their hands, putting it to the side. Their eyes trail to Phil's wings for a moment, glance down at Techno huddled close to Phil, and for a split second... Techno considers throwing his patience out the window and just using the newly acquired sword at his hip to get past the whole awkward meeting stage. But the moment moves on quick enough, and Phil takes a small step back as they stand up from their seat. I am. What brings you here? They ask, and Phil's grateful that he gets straight to the point. I, um... Phil falters trying to think of how to phrase this in such a way that it will make sense. I've had a few questions I wanted to ask. He tilts his head, waiting for Phil to go on. There was a flyer outside, on the wall. It was asking for the second monster of... Phil trails off, his words faltering. Oh. They blink, looking conflicted for a moment before his expression calms into something more reassuring. The apocalypse. Phil smiles, even if he probably shouldn't be smiling at the idea of complete and utter destruction of the world they know. Yes. Do you... The second one, he hasn't been found? The priest thinks for a moment, humming. Well, no one's kept him captured that I know of. He's still on the run. On the run, Phil's head repeats, and he hates the bitter taste of that leaves in his mouth. This kid has been captured before, and has escaped, only to continue running. And the thought of that makes something protective rise up in his chest. He becomes a little more aware of Techno's presence by his side. 
Do you know where he is? Phil questions. And he tries to keep his tone calm. But there's still a slight hint of desperation in his words. And he can see the way the priest's face shifts at hearing it. He doesn't respond for a few seconds, looking almost confused. Are you searching for him? He asks, Phil nodding. Well, there's plenty of people looking for him already. You don't have to worry. He'll be found before anything terrible happens, if that's the problem. No, that's not... Phil cuts them off, waving a hand. I need to find him. The priest looks down at Techno again for a second, clasping his hands together. They look at Phil with a thoughtful expression, something like realization settling on their features, and they smile. For what reason? He asks, quietly. To stop the apocalypse. Phil responds, shrugging with one shoulder. What else? Plenty of hunters have come here asking the same, I hope you know. To stop the apocalypse. Are you planning on hunting the second monster as well? No. Phil answers, without hesitation. I'm, I'm just searching for him so I can prevent any world-ending events. So you can take another unfortunate child under your wing for protection? Isn't that what you're doing? They say, raising their eyebrows. Phil doesn't get to respond before they continue again, tilting their head down to Techno with a friendly smile. Like this one, Technoblade. Phil freezes, and Techno looks up from the floor in shock, before taking a step back to stand behind Phil, trying to hide in the feathers of his wings. Phil's hand jumps to the sword at his side. Oh, no! No, I don't mean any harm. The priest immediately says, holding his hands out in a calming manner, bright gold eyes staring wide at Phil. I just... His words fall flat at Phil's glare, and he lowers his hands, looking nervous. Glancing to the people still in the church, who haven't overheard their quiet conversation, he gives another shaky smile nodding to a room by the side of the church. Look, we can talk more where someone might not overhear. And how do I know I can trust you? Phil demands, wary. Each time Techno's been recognized, people assume the worst, jump to their conclusions. Phil doesn't want it to repeat again, and he doesn't want to dirty his sword after he's just gotten it. But he will if he needs to. I wouldn't sell you out, they say, almost scandalized at the prospect, and Phil just gives him an unimpressed look. I swear, you have my word. He tries instead. Phil only looks slightly convinced, making a face. Techno peeks out from around Phil's legs, making a face as well. They stammer for a second trying to think of a way to let Phil know they really do mean no harm. He looks at Techno, and him and Techno lock eyes, Techno frowning deeply and squinting, as if he's trying to be intimidating. He just looks upset, if anything. I've seen the second child before, he says, still looking at Techno, and Techno's face falls. Phil looking surprised as well searching for any hint of a lie as the priest looks back up at Phil. And I know he's not what everyone makes him out to be. He... he doesn't deserve to be killed. The words hang in the air for a moment, Phil considering his choices here. He can faintly hear the crinkle of the paper still in Techno's hands. Okay. Phil agrees, finally taking his hand off the grip of his sword, but only so he can lean down and pick Technoblade up off the ground, holding him to his chest. He carries Techno with one hand, and keeps a resting hand on his weapon with the other. All right. All right. The priest repeats, and walks along, gesturing for Phil to follow. 
Their footsteps are quiet as they make their way to the corner of the church. The priest, pushing open a wooden door, which leads to a small room, half taken up by the stairs that lead higher up into the church. There's boxes and barrels for storage scattered around, a light layer of dust on them. And Phil doesn't exactly feel secure when the door closes quietly behind him with a creak. I'm sorry if it's a little cramped in here, but it's better than someone overhearing and recognizing that child. It's all right, Phil mutters, even though he is uncomfortable with how small the room is. The stairs offer comfort, at least, as a way out. You've seen the second child, you said. Once, in passing. The priest answers, nodding. He came for a place to sleep. And he was gone before I could offer him somewhere to go. A small boy slipping through the doors in the middle of the night, clothes dirty, hair in his face. His feet had been scraped and covered with dried mud, no shoes on to protect them. He had curled up on one of the long benches with a blanket that was offered. And by the time the priest had realized that the prophecy had described a siren hybrid as one of the three, it was too late. With sunrise just barely coming up, the kid had gone. He had taken the blanket with him. I didn't realize. They trail off, Phil tilting his head. I thought, when the prophecy, the visions, all the talk went around, when it said there would be three monster children, they would be more... monstrous. More easy to kill, you mean? Phil asks, the priest sputtering as they try to disagree. No, no, I just... They're just kids. Although many don't seem to see it that way. People's perceptions can be warped easily enough with words. The priest says, Phil humming. Like with him. He points to Techno in Phil's arms. From the rumors I've heard. The Blood God is a ruthless danger to anyone who lives. Something that could kill in the blink of an eye. Techno huffs, wrapping his arms around Phil's neck. He's definitely dangerous, they're right about that. Phil agrees, the priest looking marginally surprised. He can kill, but it's not like he wants to. What child would? They ask and Phil's mind jumps to that incident in town once again. Techno with blood on his hands, two dead bodies under him. One that's backed into a corner. Phil answers. What else have you heard about Techno? Well, from what's come around, many think he's dead. That's a relief. And Phil lets the smallest amount of stress fall off his shoulders. There were a few sightings. Some fake. Maybe a few true? Phil shrugs. But after nothing came up, people assumed he must have been killed by someone who didn't spread the news. Phil nods, grimacing a little. After what happened earlier, there's no doubt that panic will rise up again, as word travels that Techno is perfectly alive, having killed two men and being accompanied by Phil who will no doubt stick out with the wings on his back. There goes their element of blending in. And the second child? Phil asks. I'm afraid that even with what little magic I hold, I can't give you the exact location. But I can tell you where he was last captured, and where the hunters are looking. I'm often kept up with it, since so many come to ask me about the prophecy and information over him. Phil stares blinking, a torn expression on his face. He's been captured before. Techno tugs at the collar of his shirt, and Phil rubs a hand onto his back. Multiple times. The priest nods, looking pained, because there isn't an easy way to go saying this. No one's entirely sure how he keeps escaping, but no one's been able to pin him down long enough. I don't know how many times he's escaped. Oh. Phil breathes out, and he holds Techno tight in his arms. He was late. 
Phil had promised to try and protect these kids, and he's already partially failed one. He knows it won't be easy to find and help this one. No doubt his trust will be broken from being on the run. But Phil knows he will find a way to get this kid to come with him. So he doesn't have to be doing this on his own anymore. But either way, Phil can't stop the feeling of guilt and panic creeping up his throat. And he stares into the wooden floor as he tries to blink away tears threatening to well up and spill out. What if he's too late? What if, as they speak right now, the kid is getting cornered again, with luck not on his side? Phil can't do anything, hasn't done anything, and it kills him. A small hand smacks into his face. The culprit, being Techno, who hits Phil gently, somewhat gently, with a palm against his nose. He holds it there for a moment. Phil blinking at Techno in slight confusion, and Techno blinks back, before smacking him again. What? Technoblade? Phil huffs, grinning and reaching up to pull Techno's hand off, lightly holding onto the kid's wrist. Techno gives him an almost smug smile, and Phil responds by tugging at Techno's hand and blowing a raspberry against his palm. Techno jerks his hand back with a squeal and he holds it to his chest, narrowing his eyes at Phil with a frown. Phil only snickers. Turning his attention back to the priest, who smiles at the sight before him, Phil watches as they go to search through the storage in the room, rummaging around in a chest for a moment, before walking to Phil and holding out a map. Here, he says, Phil taking it from his hand, letting Techno help him unfold it and hold it up for the two of them to see. There should be a town called Ascot, farther down, they say, as Techno and Phil scan over the map. Techno curiously takes the information in. Phil spots the town easily enough. That's where I last heard of him, of a sighting there. It's not much, but I hope that you'll be able to find him. The priest nods, Phil glancing up from the map, as Techno tries to fold it again, somewhat succeeding. Thank you, Phil says, meaning it with all his heart. It's enough. I... He pauses, and Techno goes still as well, as the sound of the front doors slamming open sounds out. The priest looks to the door with wide eyes. Everyone out! Someone yells, Phil's heart dropping. There is a dangerous individual in the building. For your safety, everyone out! He turns to the priest, who looks just as panicked, raising his hands up. I didn't sell you out, they say, quickly walking to the door. Stay here. You'll be fine. They're here for me. How am I going to be fine? Phil whispers, taking a few steps back, the priest waving a hand, and the door shuts behind them. Phil takes a deep breath in, looking to the stairs and he takes the map from Techno's hands, tucking it away, and going up the steps, hoping it'll lead somewhere where he can see something. It leads to some kind of balcony up above, by the sides of the church, and Phil kneels down by the railing, having a full view of what happens below them. He can see multiple people scattered by the front doors, weapons in hand, and light armor. Who's that? Techno asks voice barely a whisper, holding on tightly to Phil as he looks down as well. I don't know. Phil answers truthfully, listening in on the conversation happening below. Phil's thankful to see the priest standing his ground, the hunters seeming to be hesitant with coming more into the church with how they cross their arms with a stern look. I understand. I apologize for barging in, but for your safety, this is a church. A sacred place you can't just come in here with weapons, yelling for people to leave. Of course, but do you have any idea how rude that is? The priest insists, tilting his head at the man in front of him, who wears golden armor and holds an iron sword in his hand. Listen, he insists, holding a hand up. 
We heard reports of a man coming in here, who's connected to an incident that happened not that long ago in a village nearby. Phil huffs, wincing at the loss of being unknown. Word has traveled that fast? Well, it makes sense. With people thinking Technoblade was dead, only for him to pop back up with new blood on his hands. That doesn't mean you can just drag him out by force, the priest says, frowning, giving a look to the other hunters scattered around, who all take a few steps towards the front door, as to not intrude more than they already have. The man in front of him looks slightly frustrated. Do you even know what he's protecting? He has... The church is not a place for violence. Surely there can be an exception when he holds something that could kill us all. The priest levels him with a look, as if his patience has worn thin. The hunter goes quiet, and a few people even look to the ground in shame. This church is a sacred place that offers sanctuary to those who need it. Anyone within these walls is protected by that rule. You absolutely cannot force them out. So he is here. The man asks, getting narrowed eyes in response. Sorry, please, just hear us out. If you are really insistent on catching the person you're looking for, you may wait outside until he leaves, and you can meet him then. But you cannot go searching around and disrupting the peace of my church. The priest says, clasping his hands together in front of him, and for a second, his eyes are just a little too bright. I will ask one more time. Leave. Phil watches, as there's some hesitance from the people to exit the church. But with the way the priest holds no room for argument in their expression, they leave eventually, and Phil can hear talk of guarding the exits of the church as the front doors close. Waiting a few seconds to really make sure they're gone, Phil stands up, looking over the railing, the priest looking up at Phil with a sympathetic face. I'm not sure how long they'll be guarding the exits, but you both can stay for as long as you need to. They say, walking through the now empty seats of the church. I was telling the truth of offering sanctuary. You are safe here. I appreciate it. Phil answers, his words nearly echoing out across the empty church. But we can't stay. There's still the second kid. And with each minute passing, it's another minute where that kid could be in danger. They nod at Phil with a conflicted look. Then how will you leave? Phil walks along the pathway to another set of stairs at the end, ones that go up even higher. No doubt, to the top of the church, perhaps. I've got wings, mate. Phil grins. Phil flies from the roof of the church, amused at the looks he gets when people spot him getting away, and the yelling of people realizing he has an advantage over them, with being able to soar through the air. Him and Techno fly away from the small town, not noticing the way the priest opens his doors once again, regretfully informing that, oh no, Phil has gotten away. There he goes. Phil isn't around to watch as the blacksmith that he had talked to earlier, the woman who had been so kind and friendly, punches a hunter across the face when one of them raises their voice at the priest for not keeping Phil in the building. No, instead... He and Techno fly out over the trees, Phil making sure to get a good distance between him and the town, before landing on the ground to check the map once more. The town they need to go to is far. But not too far. It'll take two weeks tops for Phil to fly them over there. Techno kicks his boot into the dirt under him as Phil looks over the map, and he makes an unhappy noise, realizing something. What's wrong, mate? Phil asks, looking down to see Techno slump against him, huffing. I dropped my coin. Techno supplies. And Phil can't help but laugh, even when Techno gives him a frown. They fly at night, then either rest or walk during the day. Phil doesn't want to risk being spotted in the sky while he makes his way to the town, 
so traveling under the protection of the night is the best way to go. Techno mostly sleeps in Phil's arms while it's night, and when Phil lands down at sunrise, he sleeps with Techno, who rests in his arms still, the two of them sleeping far into the morning. They wake up in the middle of a grassy field, tall grass that reaches up to Techno's waist all around them. Phil takes the chance to finally use the swords they have, and Techno practically leaps at the opportunity to finally learn how to use it, holding it with a determined look on his face. However, Phil doesn't get to teach anything in the first ten minutes or so, because Techno insists that his head is getting too loud. So he spends the time cutting away at the grass around him, swiping through and chopping away with a sense of slight aggression. Phil just watches with a fond look, arms crossed. Techno cuts out a whole path in the grass, seeming to not care if it'll seem weird from above, but more focused on just cutting through something, satisfying the urge for some kind of violence. Hey, Phil says, after a few minutes of Techno focused on his work. Techno raises his chin, but he doesn't quite look away from the grass still cutting across it again. About your voices. Techno pauses, holding the sword out in front of him. He turns his head to Phil. What about them? This helps, right? Yeah. Techno shrugs, cutting down another piece of grass. They just kind of want something exciting. And actually... When they're not loud and overlapping, they say a lot of annoying things. Really? Cutting grass is boring, Techno says, in a mocking voice. Why grass? Because I'm not cutting anything else, this is all I got. He mutters under his breath. Phil huffs, shaking his head. Hey. Techno looks at him, face bored. What are they saying now? Phil asks, and Techno blinks. He stares at Phil for a long minute, and Phil thinks he might not respond at all. When he mumbles out, just stuff, and goes back to attacking the grass. Techno's head fills with silly words. Dad, Dadza, we got to protect him. And he shoves it down, tells the voices to shush, and cuts at the grass. The time passes by slowly, their routine going well. They either fly, walk, rest, or practice sparring. And Phil knows exactly which one Techno enjoys the most. They're a week into their travel, Techno knowing how to hold a sword better, and Phil being just a bit more relieved at the progress they make. From getting closer to the town, and from Techno learning how to defend himself. It's daylight when they're walking along a dirt path, Phil and Techno side by side as they make their way to their destination. The town should be just a few days more away, and once they get there, Phil is sure he can find a way to get some sort of information out of someone to try and find the next kid. As they walk along, Phil is lost in his thoughts, enough to where he almost doesn't hear the crinkling of paper in Techno's hands. When he looks to his side, he finds nothing, and Phil stops in his tracks, turning around. Techno's stopped walking, too, and he holds the flyer from earlier, from the church. He stares at the picture of what is supposed to be Wilbur, expression blank, and Phil frowns. He had hoped that Techno dropped that sometime during their traveling, but he still had it, tucked away in his pocket, apparently. Tech? Phil asks, and the paper crumples in Techno's grip, his hands holding it too tight. Techno. His face has shifted into something upset, and Phil quickly walks over, aiming to gently take the flyer away Offer words of comfort? Maybe have them rest here for a while. He ends up stopping in his tracks at Techno's words, though. This isn't fair. 
Techno mumbles out, Phil just barely hearing it. It feels like his heart has dropped, with the tone in Techno's voice, quiet and almost sorrowful. What? Phil is only able to say, his words failing him. This isn't fair. Techno repeats, much more stressed. He frowns at the paper in his hands. This... They're offering a lot of money for his head. For people to kill him. Or put him in a cage, probably. Techno. Phil clears his throat, holding out his hand. Give me the flyer. No. Techno refuses, raising his head. You said this is the second kid. He's like me, right? Technoblade. Phil swallows. Techno's eyes staring at him. And for once, they feel like they're holding too many questions. Could this have been me? Techno asks. And Phil sets his jaw to try and stave off the way his heart hurts at those words. I keep looking at this when you're sleeping. And you said he is the second kid. There's three of us. So he's like me. He is. Phil answers carefully. And, and so if there's this paper for him, people wanting him to die and paying money for it, then there's one for me too, isn't there? I... Phil falters, sighing. Yes, probably. Is there one for you? Techno says, and he says it like that's a concept that's worse than his own life being in danger, his face holding the slightest bit of anger. Phil almost doesn't want to answer, but his hesitation is answer enough. Techno's face shifts into something not quite shocked, but a mix of disgust and anger, young frustration. That's... Techno cuts himself off, looking down at the flyer again, and he tears it into pieces. That's not fair. That's stupid. That's not fair. Technoblade. Techno ignores him, ripping apart the paper into shreds in his hands. No. That's... No, why would they do that? Techno yells, letting the pieces of paper fall onto the dirt then dragging his shoe over it, pressing it into the ground. That's not fair! Why do they want to hurt you? Because I have you. Phil answers quietly, watching as Techno gets riled up, slamming his foot into the ground. And why do they want to kill me? Or him? He points at the ripped-up paper on the ground. Why would they want to... It's... Phil waves his hands kneeling down in front of Techno. It's not easy to explain, Tech. There's bad people in the world. And good ones. One good one. Techno stresses, jabbing Phil in the chest. Phil ignores the swell of emotion he feels in his heart at hearing that. And it is unfair. You're right. It's not fair at all. But they're scared. They're scared?! Techno repeats, almost scoffing. Yes. And fear makes people do stupid things. Sometimes even drastic things. I'm scared too! Techno insists, hitting his hands against Phil. I'm scared of getting killed! He hits against his shirt again. I'm scared of you getting killed! Phil takes a sharp breath in, holding on to Techno's hands gently. Techno. And he's probably scared, too! Techno points to the paper again, then continues, shaking his head. They're scared. Scared of what? Me killing them? They're trying to kill me first! I know. That's dumb! You have a right to be angry about it. It is dumb. Phil smiles, Techno frowning. But... Phil pauses. Techno pauses, too, going still, the two of them listening out to the trees around them. 
There's the sound of people. Of horses. Phil? Techno says quietly, looking past Phil, squinting down the path. Phil stands up, turning around, looking as well. He sees a group of people on horse emerge from the trees, making their way down the path, weapons in hand, yelling out at each other. One of them holds a crossbow, another a sword, an axe. Phil? Techno says again, more panicked, and Phil sweeps Techno off his feet and goes running off the path into the trees. He hears the sound of people following, and there's more yelling, branches and bushes getting pushed to the side as Phil runs, Techno holding on tightly, looking over Phil's shoulder. There's people running after us, they're... Techno says, gasping when an arrow comes flying through the air. It doesn't land that close to them, but it's enough to scare them, and Phil runs even faster. Phil? The trees overhead are in his way to fly, the branches blocking his way out. Phil runs up a hill, seeing that the trees led up into a clearing up ahead, thankfully to what looks like a river. It's all right. There's a clearing up ahead. We can get away there. Phil reassures. Techno holding on with a death grip as Phil makes his way over roots and plants. He's not too sure if the people behind him are hunters or not, but it doesn't really matter, because as he sprints, he's able to get to the clearing, his wings spreading out almost as soon as there is space for it. And just as he's about to fly off over the river to get away, Techno tugs at the collar of his shirt. Phil... Techno breathes out, and the way he says it makes Phil pause, looking down from the sky to see a boy, looking to be Techno's age, standing in the river, staring back at them with wide, gray eyes, blue scales scattered at the sides of his face. Phil seems to lose his breath right there, as Wilbur stares at them both. Chapter 7 Fish Kid. Phil. Techno hits a hand against his shoulder, eyes wide. That's from the poster, he whispers, and Phil can only nod, numbly, his throat feeling tight. Fins for ears, blue scales scattered on the side of his face, like that poster had said. Appearance of a small boy, it had described. Phil will agree with that part, because that's what he's seeing. The kid is just standing in the middle of the river, the water rushing past his shins as he stares at Phil with a shocked expression, blinking slowly. He looks lost, almost. Phil wonders if he was walking through the river as a way to move without leaving tracks. There's hair all up in his face, wavy brown mostly covering his eyes, in a way that makes Phil want to brush it back, just so it's not blocking his vision. Phil's slightly surprised to see it's not terribly unkempt. It's tangled, for sure, but it could be worse. And it's good for a kid who's been on the run, out on his own. His clothes are in a similar fashion. Definitely not clean, but not too torn. If anything, he just needs a haircut. Actual clean clothes and he would look like a normal boy. Time seems to stop for a moment, as Phil takes in the sight of Wilbur standing in the middle of the water, and Wilbur stares right back, his eyes stuck on Technoblade, who's held in his arms, and the wings on Phil's back, half stretched out from Phil preparing to fly off. A second passes, two, and time continues, Phil blinking again, as Wilbur seems to fully realize there's now an unfamiliar person at the other side of the river. He takes a careful step back, and Phil stays in place, scared that if he moves, the kid will run. There's the sound of yelling in the trees nearby, people on horseback, and Phil is reminded that they're being chased. Wilbur's attention goes to the trees behind Phil, and his face is a mix of confused and panicked, 
stepping back and forth in the water like he can't decide on which direction he wants to go. Towards Phil, or away? Techno acts before Phil can think of anything, kicking his legs and trying to squirm out of Phil's arms, Phil nearly dropping him from the sudden struggle. Technoblade, hold on! Phil fumbles, putting Techno down on the ground, and for a second he thinks he's about to sprint off. But Techno just takes two steps forward before stopping. He stands still, hands raised up to his mouth, as if he's going to yell something. But he doesn't, and instead just stares at Wilbur, mouth opening and closing. If Phil had to take a guess, he would say Techno's probably lost his words. The sound of hunters gets nearer, and Phil turns around just as they emerge from the trees. There's six of them, each holding a weapon in hand. Phil can see the realization and hesitation that flickers over their faces as they see Phil, and Phil frowns deeply in response, folding his wings back. Technoblade, stay behind me. Phil warns, pulling his sword, and he hears only small footsteps in response. He glances behind him, and his heart drops as he finds Techno running towards the river, towards where Wilbur is wading through the water to get to the trees on the other side. Techno? Phil yells, and he watches Techno's retreating back for a split second, before turning back around and deciding he needs to get rid of the threat first. As much as he wants to try and grab the two of them and fly off, he also doesn't want to be holding a screaming child that's trying to escape his grip 30 feet up in the air. Giving his attention to the hunters in front of him instead, he crouches down to grab a small rock from the ground, squeezing it in his palm. Six people, all on horseback, two people with crossbows, the rest with melee weapons, an axe, swords. It's hardly a fair fight. He's outnumbered entirely. But... His chances don't feel that low. Stifling down the worry from Technoblade running off, he hopes Techno knows what he's doing, and throws the rock through the air, aiming just right. It hits squarely into someone's eye, and they fall off their horse with a scream. Phil rushes forward the moment they hit the ground, ducking as an arrow gets sent over his head. When the person on the ground looks up, Phil's already right there too quick, with a sword raised high. He brings it down onto them without a single sliver of hesitation. Shocked yelling rises up in the air, frantic threats being thrown towards Phil as he raises his head, pulling his sword out and raising it once more. He can't let them get past him, to follow down the river. Technoblade's been insistent with training, but he still shouldn't be in an actual fight. He's still too small. As for that boy in the river... Phil would rather he doesn't deal with any more hunters than he already has. So he grabs another rock off the ground, ducks as a second arrow gets shot his way. He grabs the opportunity of surprise with both hands, spreading out his wings and pushing himself into the air, just high enough to slam his knee into someone's head, knocking them off their horse as well. There's overlapping screams, people trying to make a half-baked plan to fight back against Phil, because they aren't prepared for this. They're not prepared to actually fight. They were expecting to capture a small monster who's been evading them for months on end. A kid. Not fight Phil, who's far more of a threat than Wilbur can be at that moment. Technoblade gracefully ignores the commotion that breaks out behind him as he runs, trusting that Phil will be fine. His head seems to fall into a fight too, and he ignores the constant stream of words trying to give him half-baked advice. He's going to be fine. He's Phil. Don't leave Phil. Turn back around. Quick, run faster. He's getting away. You have a sword. Use it. Join the fight. Protect Phil. Don't lose the kid. Wait! Technoblade yells at Wilbur, nearing towards the edge of the river, just as Wilbur is about to leave it on the other side. A few rocks get kicked into the water, as Techno comes to a sudden halt, just a few inches away from the rushing currents. Hey! Techno yells again, cupping his hands around his mouth. Wilbur looks back at him, eyes wide. Techno looks down at the river before him, 
with an unhappy expression, a deep frown setting in as he actually, for a second, considers turning back around. He knows he should follow, but everything in him is telling him not to touch the freezing water, because if there's one thing he knows he hates, it's the feeling of the cold. His head rises up and screams to just cross the damn river already, and Techno really doesn't want to. But it seems like he isn't going to have a choice, because Wilbur only gives Technoblade a minute before looking behind him, seeing Phil fight off two people at once. He seems to decide that's enough waiting, and he turns and runs into the forest, disappearing into the trees. Wait! Techno yells, glancing back at Phil, who's actually doing pretty well for himself. Come back! He can't just lose the kid when he's right there, with only a river in the way. Techno shoves down the annoyance creeping up in him at the fact that his shoes are going to get wet, and he tells himself it's for Phil. Running right into the shallow river still isn't easy, but at the very least, Chat is praising him for it. It's cold. It's terrible. His shoes are soaked, and it takes far too much time to run through the water, in his opinion. But he gets through it anyway. The second he's out on the other side, he ignores how his shoes and pants, and even some of his shirt, is soaked, and frantically goes to follow Wilbur, going into a sprint past the trees. He runs straight, trying not to stress at the fact he's left Phil behind, that he's running into a forest he doesn't know and that he's trying to chase another monster kid that he has next to no information for. From what Techno knows, he's probably his age. Looks like a fish, almost like the ones Phil used to cook for him when he was younger, but a lot more blue. That poster he had before, it wasn't new. He knows that much. This kid has been chased for a while. His mind wanders to a book he read in the library a while ago. Something of an adventurer who always got into trouble. He was wanted all across the lands, multiple bids on his head, because he always meddled with the kings of the land, who were always hurting the people in small ways or being too greedy. Every now and then, in the story, there would be countless guards sent by those same kings trying to capture him, but each time, the adventurer got away just barely, always running off to cause more trouble for the mean kings and to escape more guards in the coolest ways. Techno loved that book. It was a bit dramatic at times, but he loves the idea of never getting caught, always fighting back against the bigger people, who were never nice. Bigger people are always dangerous, always trying to hurt him. Except for Phil. Phil's always good. If Phil was a person in that book... Techno would like to think he could be a nice king, who always covered for the adventurer. Privately, Techno always liked to think he could be that adventurer, causing trouble, then running to Phil's kingdom for safety, before running off again to continue his journey. Techno's not an adventurer in real life. He can't escape in cool ways like he had read, and he can't fight back in big ways. But he can try helping, like that adventurer did. Fish Kid is just like the people being hurt by their mean kings, just like him. He's not an adventurer, but he can be something similar, he hopes. Technoblade keeps a hand on the hilt of the sword at his side as he sprints, hopping over roots and sticks in his path, trying not to trip. The chatting in his head has simmered down somewhat now just excited for a chase, although some still insist on going back and using the very sword in Techno's hand. He tries to ignore that. Hey! Techno yells out again, stopping for a second, panting. He sees a glimpse of someone running, past the trees, and he picks on up his running again, frantically trying to follow. Hey, wait! He runs faster panting for air and ducking under low branches, weaving through the bushes and trees in his way. Part of him wonders if this kid is slow, because Techno seems to catch up to him in no time. 
creeping up on Wilbur with a rising hope that he can actually catch this kid. Hold on! Techno yells out, and Wilbur glances behind him with a shocked look, making a sharp turn and disappearing from view. Techno comes to a sudden halt, breathing heavy as he turns his head, trying to figure out where Wilbur's gone. He peeks around the trees, turning around in circles, but he doesn't hear the sound of running footsteps. It's like he's just disappeared. Uh, hello? Technoblade yells out, pausing, then starting again. I, uh, I just want to talk. I think you'll want to talk with me, believe me. Silence. Techno wonders if he's actually lost him, and disappointment crawls up his spine. I'm like you! Techno tries, frowning with a huff. We're... You've had people chasing you, trying to kill you, right? I also almost got killed, because I was... He shrugs, resting a hand on his sword. Dangerous, or something. He hears no response, and just as Techno is about to consider checking if the fish has climbed into the trees, there's a rustle of leaves and quick footsteps coming up behind him. Technoblade spins around, not prepared to get suddenly pushed back, and he falls onto the ground with a scream. Wilbur stands over him, hands curled into fists at his sides, and while he's trying to look threatening, it doesn't have much of an effect because Techno just feels more annoyed than anything. That, and Technoblade has a sword. Fishkid doesn't. Ow. Techno deadpans, narrowing his eyes up at Wilbur, who makes an unhappy face back. Face scrunched up. What was that for? Stop chasing me! Wilbur yells back, stumbling backwards as Techno pushes himself onto his feet standing up straight with a groan. His shoes are wet, he's tired, he's cold, and he just wants Phil. But this kid is supposed to come with them, so... Techno doesn't feel like Fish Kid is making a good first impression, though. Could be better. What do you want? Wilbur asks, voice tilting up in a whiny tone. Well, I'm just trying to talk to you. Techno huffs wrapping his arms around himself. You're not very good at letting me do that, though. I don't want to talk to you. Well, I don't really want to either, but Phil says you're kind of like me, so... Techno shrugs, kicking at the floor. I... want to help. Even though there's a part of him that also wants to turn around and let Fish Kid disappear into the trees. Out of sight, out of mind. Wilbur just stares at him. Slight confusion on his face. You're nothing like me. He looks over Techno again, seeming to consider something, before brushing it off. Go away. No. Techno deadpans. And you are. We're, like... Phil's better at explaining this. Can we go back? No! Wilbur refuses, turning around and turning his back onto Techno. What, so you can trap me? You're probably leading the hunters right to me. No, I'm not! Techno exclaims, slightly offended. I don't like those people either. I don't care, Wilbur says in a singing tone, and he turns to Techno with a huff. Walk away and leave me alone, please, he asks, and his voice seems to echo in the trees. Around Techno, in a sweet, kind tone. Techno just blinks. Mm, no. He shakes his head. Wilbur freezes, eyes going wide, and he turns fully back around to Technoblade, taking a step back. W what? He looks around. You didn't listen to me. Why would I? Techno asks. You pushed me. I pushed... Well, yeah, because you were chasing me. Well, I wouldn't have been chasing you if you stopped running. Y you... Wilbur sputters, 
words dissolving into nothing. And he clears his throat, glaring at Techno. Go away! His voice echoes a bit again, and Techno doesn't move. I'm not gonna just let you go. Techno waves his arms up, before crossing them across his chest. We've been trying to look for you, for like a long while now. People are always looking for me. Wilbur mutters, shaking his head, and looking absolutely perplexed again. You're not listening to me. No, because you pushed me. Techno says again, almost bitter. Why isn't my voice working? Wilbur yells, coughing for a moment. Did, did, did I overuse it? But I can still talk. He looks down at his hands in front of him, confused. I mean, you're talking just fine. Techno gives as input. Although your voice is kind of raspy. Are you sick? Wilbur makes a face towards Technoblade. Go away! No, thank you. Leave me alone! No. Turn around and... Wilbur breaks off in a cough, holding a hand over his mouth. When he speaks again, his voice seems slightly more raspy. You're not listening to me! And I'm not going to. Techno frowns. Are you done? Wilbur blinks at him, like he can't believe Techno isn't following his words. And his face shifts from confusion to shock, like a startling realization has come over him. Wait. Wait, hold on. What? You said... Wilbur blinks again, mouth opening and closing as he clears his throat, looking at Technoblade with a different light. You said we're the same. I didn't say that. Techno disagrees. Wilbur's face falling so quick that he rushes to follow it up with a rephrase. I said that you're like me. I'm not a fish. Neither am I. Wilbur mutters. But Technoblade begs to differ. From the fins at the side of his head. You're like me. Technoblade nods slowly trying to think of what Phil would say. Wilbur's gone from angry to just plain confused, and Techno doesn't want to go back into yelling. He's tired enough already. Shoving down the wayward awkwardness slipping into the air around them, Techno tries to stand up straight and tall, even with how he's slightly shivering. He holds a hand out, like he's seen Phil do with plenty of strangers. And for a second, he thinks about trying to give a smile, but he gives up on that pretty quickly. I'm Technoblade, he says, holding his hand up. Wilbur stares for an uncomfortably long time, before hesitantly raising his hand up and puts Techno's hand in his. A small handshake. Wilbur. My name is Wilbur. Hello. Techno pulls his hand back, wrapping his arms back around himself, Wilbur still having his hand raised up for a moment longer. Hi, Wilbur says back, tilting his head. Why doesn't my voice work on you? What do you mean? My voice? Wilbur clears his throat. I can make people do what I say. I tell them to do something, and they'll do it, right away. Techno raises his eyebrows, intrigued. Really? Yeah. Wilbur nods. It works on everyone. That's how I've been able to always be one step ahead. Wilbur grins, holding a finger up. Well, it doesn't work on me. Techno shrugs. Try it again, do the voice. Curiosity has taken over his mind. And Techno's main priority is now to just see if Wilbur actually has powers. Because if he does, then that's not only useful, but cool. It hurts my throat if I use it a lot, Wilbur says. But he listens anyway. Walk, Walk away. away. Techno doesn't move. And Wilbur's face shifts from slight disappointment to conflicted, 
before settling on something excited. You didn't listen, Wilbur says, and Techno blinks. Wait, did you use it? Yes, you didn't even get affected by it. Wilbur nods. I've never met someone who doesn't listen. That's kind of annoying, to be honest, but you... He stops, stammering over his words. Well, Phil says that we're all part of a prophecy thing, so maybe I'm just immune. Techno says quietly. Wilbur, bursting out in a small laugh. You're... You're like me! Wilbur takes a step towards Techno. Technoblade, taking a step back with wide eyes. You didn't listen. You're not even affected, so you must be like me. Sorta. Techno feels a smile creep onto his face, infected with Wilbur's sudden raise in mood, in hope. I've never... Wow, I've never met someone like me. Wilbur grins. Techno nodding quickly. You have people trying to kill you too, right? That's what you said. They think I'm dangerous or something. Techno agrees. Which, true, but they're just mean. They're bastards. Wilbur hisses, smiling wide, even with the hate in his tone. Phil says they're scared. Maybe they should be. I swear, everyone is always... Wilbur cuts himself off, pausing. Phil? Techno nods. He's... My dad, Techno almost says. But he fumbles his words and instead says, That person you saw at the river? With wings? He's like a bird. Wilbur notes, tapping his fingers against his chin. He was fighting against the hunters, wasn't he? That gives us time. Wilbur grabs Techno by the sleeve, tugging at him, and Techno digs his feet into the ground, pulling back. Time for what? To get away! Wilbur waves a hand. I'm good at escaping those guys. We can both make some good distance if we start running. Although we do have to be careful, because sometimes there's these traps placed down near towns. We can't leave! Techno yanks his arm away, Wilbur looking surprised. We have to go back! What? Wilbur shrieks, trying to grab at Techno again. Are you trying to get killed? Phil is back at the river. We need to go back to him. You can't trust random people. Wilbur frowns. Listen, sometimes I've done that, and it doesn't go well. There's always a trap, so you shouldn't- He's not random. Techno yells, and his voice goes sharp. Wilbur actually flinching back. And he's a good person. I know. Wilbur frowns. Lots of people always seem like a good person. You don't- I know. Techno stresses, gritting his teeth. Phil's the best person I know. He's a good one. Everyone else is stupid, you're right on that one, but Phil isn't. Wilbur doesn't look convinced, frowning. Other people aren't good, Technoblade. Phil is. Techno insists. Wilbur. He tacks on after, a hint of sass. He's fought plenty of other people before. Yeah, well, they always have their arguments and stuff. Wilbur waves off, circling around Techno. I've seen plenty of fights. Just because he's fought, he fights for me. Technoblade cuts him off. And he reaches over and grabs Wilbur by the hand, stopping him in his tracks. And he wants to fight for you, too. Wilbur pauses staring at Technoblade's hand curled around his with an unreadable expression. How are you sure of that? He whispers. Why do you think he was fighting the hunters? Wilbur's eyes go wide, and he glares up at Technoblade, huffing. Maybe they were just hunting him. Then he's like us. No, he's not. Wilbur yanks his hand away. You don't know anything. You can't trust him. He's going to... Wilbur freezes, going quiet. Technoblade looks at him, confused, before hearing it too. Footsteps crunching through leaves, coming fast towards him. And Techno turns around, hoping it's Phil who's caught up. But when he turns, 
it's not the person he trusts, but rather a stranger, who has an axe in hand and a bloody shoulder, staring at Wilbur and Technoblade with a triumphant look. Run! Wilbur yells, grabbing Techno by the hand, and Techno pulls his sword, the two of them circling around a tree as they're followed. We have to get to Phil! Techno yells. We're not! Wilbur goes to disagree, but they turn the corner to find the stranger right there again, and Wilbur gets kicked back with a scream. Something gets thrown, and Techno ducks, scrambling to move as Wilbur is suddenly caught in a net, trapped on the floor. Techno turns on his heel, his head overlapping with panicked voices, and he knows he can't leave Wilbur behind, so he holds up his sword, his head exploding in cheers, wanting a good fight, and the weapon in his hand feels hot, and everything is too loud. Drop your axe and get this off me! Wilbur's voice cuts through the growing panic, angry and scared, and Techno blinks, his hands shaking. An axe falls to the ground, Techno's attention getting drawn to it as the hunter walks over to Wilbur to free him. Techno runs toward the axe, picking it up with a tight grip. He lifts his head to the stranger in front of him, running close up, then swinging it as soon as Wilbur is out from the net. Wilbur yells, stumbling backwards as the person falls onto the floor with swears rising through the air. Everything is too loud. It's too much. And Techno fumbles with the sword, both wanting to drive it into the person's chest, and also wanting to run off, try and quiet it all down. A hand curls around his wrist and yanks, Techno screaming as he's pulled harshly by the hunter, who's bleeding out of their leg. Wilbur runs forward, jumping onto the person's back with his arms around their neck. Let go of him! Wilbur says, his voice breaking halfway through, throat sore. Let, Let him! him. He coughs, and then chokes as he's elbowed in the chest, falling backwards onto the ground. Techno's yanked so hard he falls onto the ground, and his sword is taken away, ripped out of his hands. He kicks his legs up, screaming again and trying to hit the person in the chest, seeing Wilbur get up, about to run towards them. Then, before Techno's own sword is used on him, the hunter gets tackled from the side, disappearing from over Technoblade as he gasps for air. He turns his head, nearly wanting to cry when he sees Phil grappling for the sword, pulling it out of the stranger's hands and throwing it to the side. He holds his own weapon with two hands, the one Techno chose for him. And he drives it down until there's no more threat. And Techno's voices simmer down at a fight well won. Wilbur runs up to Technoblade, pulling him up. Come on, come on, hurry! He whispers, pulling at Techno's hand. Phil turns to them, breathing heavy. There's blood stains on his sleeves, and a cut on the side of his arm. But he looks fine and Techno sighs in relief. Technoblade. Phil breathes out, getting to his feet. Wilbur forces Techno to stand behind him, even though Will himself is shaking from head to toe. Stay right there! He yells, clearing his throat. Don't move! No, no, wait! Techno tugs at Wilbur's hand. That's Phil! Wilbur glances back at him with a frown before looking at Phil again, who's stopped in place, looking at the two of them with an emotional expression. Hey, mate. Phil says gently, kneeling down. Wilbur takes a step back, pushing Techno back with him. Hey, I'm... I'm sorry you had to see that. Wilbur just gives him an angry look, frowning deeply. Go away. Phil smiles, huffing. I'm not going to hurt you. Somehow, that riles up Wilbur even more, and he pushes back against Techno again. Turn around and... Wilbur's cut off by Techno reaching up and slapping his hands over his mouth. Phil actually does turn around, confused for a moment, before looking back at Wilbur and Techno. 
No, he's Phil, the one I said- I know who he is! Wilbur snaps back. Then stop it! Techno crosses his arms, frowning. He's good. I really don't believe that. Wilbur mutters, narrowing his eyes at Phil, or more specifically, the bloody sword he still holds. Phil follows his gaze, looking down to the weapon in hand, and he sighs quietly, giving a tired smile. Wilbur flinches as Phil throws the sword to the side, the weapon landing in the dirt to the left of Wilbur and Techno, and Wilbur stares at it, Techno going to pick it up. See? Phil raises his hands up. I'm not going to do anything. Wilbur still isn't convinced. And he looks to Techno, who's trying to clean the sword with an unhappy mood. Mostly because he's not cleaning it very well. This is a trap. Wilbur whispers. Techno raising his head. There's bound to be more hunters nearby. Techno raises his eyebrows, looking skeptical. And he puts his attention to Phil. Phil, did you get rid of the hunters? They're gone. Phil reassures. Wilbur giving a dirty look. Phil tries not to feel offended by the constant glare he's getting. He would feel hurt, but Wilbur's face is too young to really give a harsh glare. They're gone. Technoblade repeats to Wilbur, fully trusting Phil's word. Wilbur sighs, looking around him. We need to get moving anyways. We're losing sunlight. He turns his head to Phil. You're not coming with us. Yes, he is. Techno cuts in. Wilbur crossing his arms. No, he's not. Wilbur shakes his head. He leans in towards Technoblade, voice low. You can't trust him. He's going to, to take us as prisoners or something. What if we take him as a prisoner first? Techno suggests. Wilbur blinking. One thing that Techno is sure of is that Wilbur does not like Phil. Which is fine, he will. It's a matter of time. But Wilbur's wary. Ridiculously wary. And while he's... dumb for not liking Phil, Techno kinda likes him. He's never found someone his age to hang around with. And he feels like he knows Wilbur, somehow. He feels familiar. So he presents that as a solution. And Wilbur agrees, declaring that Phil's coming with them, but they're in charge. He suggests tying Phil's hands together with the rope from the net that was used on Wilbur earlier, and Phil just holds back a laugh as Wilbur nods along with Techno. Do you know how to tie a knot? Wilbur asks, Phil sitting still on the ground to the side, watching them both with an almost exasperated look as they cut rope. Kinda? They don't know how to tie a knot. It takes several tries, and Phil having to walk them through it before they get it right. And they're able to somewhat restrain Phil. <laughs>